I do not claim to be the world's greatest father. I don't. I don't make that claim. But I will make the claim that before I was a father, I was the world's greatest uncle. I love my nieces. My nieces are with our daughter right now. My sister's kids, Reese and Paige, they're now like 10 and 8. Reese, the niece, and Paige, Paige, all the rage. Used to live in Dallas. I'm in Houston. So they were about four and a half hours north of me. And years ago, when my brother-in-law would often go overseas for work for 10 days at a time or for two weeks or whatever, I would sometimes drive up there. And it was just a good time to bond with the girls and help my sister out. So one Friday afternoon, I drive up there. I walk in. My sister says, we've got no food in this house. Let's divide and conquer. You stay here with Reese. She was about five, maybe four at the time. I'll take Paige, my sister said. We'll go to the grocery store. We'll be back in an hour tops. We'll be set for the weekend. Great. Reese and I are up in their playroom, which is huge. And looks like a Toys R Us has been hit by a tornado. And we are playing Barbies. I've got a Ken doll in this hand, and I've got Skipper in this hand. See, I know Barbie's friend's name. She's got Barbie and the Barbie car right next to the Barbie mansion. And we're playing. And in the play, all of a sudden, Barbie got really mad at Ken. So I just play back and Ken kind of yells back at Barbie. Well, Reese dropped that Barbie doll. Her neck shot up. Her eyes were this big and she went, oh! and it startled me to the point that I looked behind me like, what, what, what's going on? And I said, Reese, what's the matter? And she stood up and she scooted backwards really fast, tripping over all these toys almost all the way to the other end of the playroom. And I said, Reese, baby, what's wrong? And she said, Uncle Jake, you don't love me. Oh, it got me right here. So before I tell you what I did, let me tell you what I did not do. What I did not say. I did not say, what do you mean I don't love you? I just drove four and a half hours to come and see you. And you think I want to play Barbies? No, I'm doing this for you. And you're going to stand over there and tell me that I don't love you? And let's talk about this. Why don't we, huh? Who got you that, that drum set over there and that keyboard over there? Uncle Jake, how about the 500 dollars pit? Wasn't your mama, wasn't your daddy. Uncle Jake, that's who. But you're going to stand over there and you're going to tell me that I don't love you. So I didn't do that. Here's the other thing I didn't do. Oh, well, I'm so sorry you feel that way. I guess I'll go. I didn't do that. What did I do? Oh, oh, baby, my heart hurts that you would feel that way. I'm so sorry I hurt your feelings. I love you so much. You mean the world to me. Can you tell me what happened? Can you tell me what I did? What's wrong? And she mumbled something in her four-year-old language, and I said, oh, I, I'm so sorry. I love you so much. You mean the world to me. Can I hug you? Can I give you a hug? And we met in the middle of the room. And she curled up in my lap and I had her head right here. And she had a single tear running down her cheek. And then she raised her hand and she put her hand on my cheek. And we were okay. And adults need the exact same thing. If I do something and I upset my wife, and I see that the cycle is happening, I say, what kind of man do I want to be here? I want to be courageous and kind. And I want to do that which leads to ultimate joy, and I want to be humble. Those are actually my core values. Now, how do I show up that way and speak directly to her needs? I'm so sorry you feel not heard. You're right, I wasn't hearing you there. You're important to me, I want to hear you. Tell me again. I'm so sorry you felt left, left out there. You're important to me. It's important that you're a part of everything that I do. I choose you. I want to be with you. Can we, can we talk about this again? And when, in that moment, here's the deal. In that moment, when my showing up from that place of my values actually meets her need, and she sighs in safety. What happens to my sense of shame and failure? It goes away. 
because I'm being enough. I have the felt sense of being enough in that moment. My sense of overwhelm or being trapped, it goes away. So you see, I don't have to choose between what's best for the relationship and what's best for me because what's best for the relationship is what's best for me. Men, there is nothing in the world that will heal your shame experientially like you showing up and having the felt sense of being enough 